This thing is freaking rad. What is it? Well, this is the 2023 Toyota Sequoia SR5 Premium Edition, which means you get the soft tech leather seats, uh, leather-esque seats, yeah. and you get the 14 inch display inside. So awesome. I never see these on the road. This is Tom, also known as Mad Yeti. You've probably seen him on Instagram. If you haven't, go check it out. Tell me about this thing, dude. So I've had this since November. Uh, so we're coming up on you know five, six months right now. Um, when Toyota put out the teaser and they had that little tile that they posted and it was all dark and everyone started going in, brightening it up, trying to see what it was. Uh, <laughs> I remember I, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and then they saw, said it was a Sequoia. I'm two vehicles ago, I've had two Tundras since I had my Gen 1 Sequoia. Yeah. And I love the Gen 1 Sequoia. It was a two wheel drive, you know, 400,000 miles on it was like a 04 or something Holy like that smokes. it was I mean I drove that thing everywhere well and that had the million mile motor in it too. yeah it had the million yeah. exactly yeah so it was it was uh, a vehicle I enjoyed so much that when this was teased I thought you know what I I really want to go back to an SUV instead of a pickup truck because as it is I put a camper shell on the back of my right. truck anyways so I may as well have an SUV have the two extra seats in the back if I wanted and also uh, be able to you know do SUV stuff and totally. not just have yeah, that. I'm an SUV guy too. I love my 4Runner Suburban and it's no surprise to me that you've done a, an amazing job with this thing because your, your Tundra's, everything's been super rad. Yeah, the Tundra was a lot of fun, so, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's get into some detail. Show us up close. So I'm really excited to show you guys the build on this 2023 Toyota Sequoia. It's been uh, amazing being one of the first people to have one of these. And as it is, there's still so few that are out on the streets. I've in, in the wild have seen two or three just on the road. And other than that, everything that I've seen have been famous builds at SEMA and Expedition Overland, those guys. But otherwise, this is the only one that I've seen that's really built this way and built as far as, as this is, as, as advanced as this is compared to um, some of the other people that are starting to get theirs and build theirs out. So getting into it, we've got Toyo Open Country RT's uh, 35s. They're on the compression Icon alloy 18 inch wheels. The lift is by Icon Vehicle Dynamics. It's a stage eight, which is the three inch to four and a half inch suspension system. It has the 2.5 remote reservoir front coilovers, the billet upper control arms with the Delta Joint Pro, the sway bar drop kit, billet lower rear links, the 2.5 remote reservoir rear shocks, and dual rate rear spring kit. I bet that suspension's comfortable too. It really is. I've been through the desert just hauling and it is like butter just going over everything without any problem. Wow, all right, tell, tell me about these lights. You've got a lot of lights on here. I do have a lot of lights. These are KC Highlights Flexera 4. We've got two uh, ditch lights and then across the Westcott Designs roof rack, we put eight more of them, which is honestly overkill. But this thing is so bright that when you're going through the desert, in dark desert, it, it really lights the way. How much output, or I'm mean, not output, but how much uh, how much juice does do these use? Do you know the wattage? Or? I don't know, truthfully, yeah. I, someone said like 80,000 somethings or other, so. Oh, uh, lumens, do you know wattage? I don't know the wattage, we can find that though. We'll overlay it right now. <laughs> this is the wattage. What's going on on the front? I see a light in the middle. What's that? So this is the TRD Pro, factory TRD Pro OEM grill, which I swapped out from the SR5 Premium grill, which comes with the 20-inch light bar and the 
marker lights. It was a direct mount, so everything here was plug and play. The old grill popped off, the new one came on. And what about wiring? Was that easy to hook up? I had the guys over at Aiden James Customs do it while they were setting up the KC Highlights light. Uh, they work with KC Highlights pretty closely, so I had the grill and I just said, hey, while you're there, do you guys mind throwing it in? And from what they told me, it was a breeze. It was super easy. And this is one of those, I mean, a lot of new vehicles, anything that's meant for off-road on any, does the Sequoia have some factory auxiliary switches in there? There's auxiliary switches on the higher trim models, like the TRD Pro has some switch spots or some switch in this it's just the spots where the switches would be but I'm working with s pod to power all this all the lighting and and uh, and make everything bright I guess when we go inside you can show me how you turn those off and on now yeah. sweet um, all right let's come around the side over here tell me about your tent so the tent is a CBT Mount Hood tent, courtesy of CBT and it is the clamshell it opens like a clamshell and it is uh, aluminum, so you don't have the, you know, the cover over, which gives it a real sleek design. And it's real comfortable inside too, which is, which is nice. And even for me being six foot seven, it's a tight fit, but I do fit inside it. And what about uh, how many people you think you can get in there? Because the Sequoia is, I mean, no offense, but also kind of a family rig. Right. Um, people with their kids, you think they could fit in the in that CVT? You could probably get two adults and a small child. And when I say two adults, I mean two regular size adults, not giants like me. So two, two regular adults, a small child, or two regular adults and a dog would probably have no issue in there. Okay, cool. Tell me a little more about your rack. You mentioned it briefly. So the rack is by Westcott Designs, uh, based in Phoenix. And uh, this was one of the first ones that went out. Uh, as I said earlier, this, I was one of the first people to get the Sequoia and took it directly over to Jeff Westcott and he threw the rack up there and it's, the quality is, is second to none. There's other racks that have similar style, but his is, is very well made. Not to take away from any, any of the other companies that make racks, but his is very well made and he showed me how everything worked and where it was made and how it's cut and how it's powder coated and it's uh, it's a solid uh, rack and it has the, the crossbars across uh, just like the other racks that are out there. Sweet. So, and probably the extruded aluminum crossbars, so somewhat standard T-nuts that go in there? Exactly. It's a standard T-nuts that go in and it's, uh, it's easy to mount stuff to it. He, he really took the extra steps to make sure that the material thickness was good uh, and that what they made was a superior product. Awesome. Uh, what, do, what do you got going on the back? Oh, uh, what's that at the top of the rack there? This is the Westcott Designs bottle opener. So if you're out on the trail and uh, you're done driving for the day, you can drink responsibly and open your beer right there. You'll probably want to put something down here to stop the bottle caps from, from falling, but, but otherwise it's handy because we've all been out there before and no one has a bottle opener. Is that, uh, is that factory stock with the, the rack? This comes stock, yeah, this is factory. Sweet. Now another thing too I want to show you guys with this, with this rack is it does have this back plate on it, which is kind of different than, than other racks oh, that you see out there. that's usually open. It's usually open. So it closes it in. It doesn't block the antenna for the GPS and satellite radio. And I think it probably helps reduce wind noise just by having it as an enclosed unit there. And you're not back here with a tent there in this big open space that's visible underneath it. So it's, it's pretty cool. I feel like it probably also makes it harder for people to reach up there and try to unscrew your, your tent, tent. And, yeah 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 totally does yeah Sweet. it's it's great what do you got going on in the back so one thing that's really cool about the back here is we've all been going out to our car and you've got bags or groceries or kids backpacks and lunch boxes and all kinds of stuff uh, for me i'm coming from the shooting range and i've got gear bags and if my hands are full i can come here kick underneath there and step back and it'll open by itself it is pretty cool, yeah. Then you come in there, you stow your stuff, and you're you're ready to go. What do you got? What do you got in here? So back Let's here, see some I've, goodies. yeah, um, I've got this fridge from Set Power. Um, I want to say it's a 48 liter fridge, um, and it's this thing is a workhorse. Um, within a, a couple of minutes of plugging it in and turning it on, it is ice cold inside. So whether you got drinks or food or you're going out on the trail camping. The set power fridge really is a great alternative to some of the more high dollar fridges where people are spending 1500 bucks for essentially the same thing. Do you know, do you remember how much it was? 
I want to say it's like 400 bucks. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah, so uh, Set Power did send this to me uh, in in exchange for honest review photos and videos like this one, which I will be sending to them. It is an amazing piece of equipment for getting out on the trail, keeping all your stuff cold. And it's big too, which, you know, a lot of the fridges you see, they have all this bulk that's taken up on the inside with extra stuff. This, this isn't the case with these. And it does have a cover you can put over it to it, uh, over it as well, which will help insulate it too if you're not going to leave it running all the time and help keep right. it keep it uh, cool. And, and I'm a little partial to Falcon Overland, but uh, it's always good to know some other affordable fridge brands out there. This is affordable and it's, I think I had it in three days. I think they might even sell them on Amazon Prime, so. Uh, also, so this are some dear friends of mine. Uh, the company is called Sea Sucker, and what they make is these heavy duty suction cup mounts for roto packs, a bunch of other stuff, cell phones, uh, and they, they build it with the intent of being able to go right on the outside of your window over here. So you could mount it on the back. As you mount it, you push in the little plunger, which suctions it, and it holds. I drove from Overland Expo in Flagstaff, Arizona, back here to Southern California. No issues. That's awesome. So this is great. Um, sea sucker, and they, they, they make some really good stuff, and they're working with the water port as well to make a water port. Now. Really? They are, yeah. Oh, good. Where's your water port? I don't know. I have to ask Adrian that because <laughs> he took it back while we were at Expo. Did he? Yeah, that but not, guy. not uh, I mean, I think he needed to sell it, so, and it, we, we, we didn't have it on here, so I was like, I don't care, sell it. Cause cool, and if you don't know who Waterport is, I've got it over here on the Forerunner, at least the big one, the Weekender, but uh, self-pressurizing water tank. 55 PSI, right? Yeah. Yeah, 50, yeah the water, the water port's great, and, and there will be one on this soon, possibly the hitch mount, possibly on top of the tent, but the, uh, the water port is pretty cool. It's, you know, a, a portable shower, portable rinse kit. It's, um, you know, either four gallons or eight gallons. I believe they have a smaller option as well. But the water port, I've been working with them for a couple years now, and they make super quality stuff. What's what's going on on this side? This is the new Cascadia Vehicle Tents 270 degree awning, which means it comes out and wraps all the way around to the back side of the vehicle. And as I said earlier, I'm 6'7", and that is tall enough where I can stand underneath it comfortably. And like I, I probably wouldn't do jumping jacks or anything like that, but I'm able to stand under it comfortably and they, they really thought of everything with this one. It's got a battery powered LED light strip so you can turn your light on while you're cooking and have access to you know shelter from uh, different kinds of weather or just hanging out. And is this one um, self-supported? Does it have legs? It has one leg that pops out right about where you're at, which is about the midpoint from where it comes out. So right about where you're at is where it would be. Right, and how long do you think it takes to set up? Uh, setup is about a minute. Oh, it's quick. Yeah. Holy smokes. And what about breaking back down? Breaking back down is several minutes easier with two people. And I, I would love to show you, but it's pretty windy right now. So we'd be fighting it. Yeah. You can't tell, you can't tell, but it's a little, it's windy out it's, here. It's a little windy, cold, and it actually might, looks like it might start raining. So. Well, a good time for awning then. I know. We'll get a good time <laughs> for awning. Yeah. Um, and I didn't ask you before, how long does it take to set up that tent? I know clamshells are quick and easy. The CBT ten is maybe maybe a minute. Unbuckling it and, and opening it is the fast part. The extra minute and a half is crawling inside and setting up the wires for the rain fly. But other than that, it's it's easy up, easy down. I mean, the entire camp you could probably break down in five minutes. Oh, sweet. And okay, so the tent minute to set up, and it's on a pretty tall rig right now. I've had tents before that the ladder's not long enough. Is this ladder long enough, the stock one? Stock ladder is long enough, but I did upgrade it to a beefier ladder just because the the stock ladder seemed a little light and flimsy. The downside to that is I have to carry the ladder separate, and that was just a personal preference of mine was up, update, upgrading the ladder. The stock ladder would work for the majority of people. For me, just my own comfort, I wanted to set up, uh, get something a little bit beefier. Truthfully, I did climb up the stock ladder. It felt fine. It did feel a little shaky for me uh, towards the upper rungs, but it was, uh, it was just a personal preference of mine to get something a little bit beefier. The downside with upgrading the ladder is that you need to, you can't store it inside the tent like you can with the stock ladder. So I found myself carrying the, the aftermarket ladder around in the back, but 
As far as ladders go, it hooks up the same way. It looks identical, it's just a little bit thicker. Let's see the inside. Whoa, it's like a Tesla screen. Yeah, it's a big screen. The screen's 14 inches. Now this is not a standard option that comes with the SR5 typically, but when these were released, they did, I don't know if it was a limited run or, or a full run of this SR5 Premium, because usually SR5s are known for having the, the cloth seats and being the base model. But with this, there's nothing base model about this. It's got the full tech package. I do not have the wireless charging, but other than that, there's really not a lot of difference that, that I've seen between uh, like a limited or or some of the higher higher tier trim packages it has the soft text leather seats which i guess aren't real leather but it's uh, a very high-end synthetic leather uh, the 14 inch display the steering wheel is leather wrapped it's got you know everything is very uh everything is very soft to the touch which is nice um even even over here on the doors so it's, it's not only a mean looking rig but it's comfortable it's comfortable as well yeah how's the sound uh, the sound is not that great. So the 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 stereo is whatever the stock stereo comes with. It's not terrible, but it's not great. It leaves some to be it leaves something to be desired from you know a higher higher quality sound system. But it's not terrible. Right. Well, that's good. It's not terrible. And also, like you said, it's an SR5, so you can't can't really expect the very best of every part of it. Right. Um, but that's always user upgradable, you know, as, as needed, right? Right, exactly. So I do want to show you guys this. This is how we control the lights. Oh, yeah, so you come in here and all of these, I don't have the sticker on them yet because we are still playing with some stuff, but this is the S pod module that powers the lights just by touching a button there. And it, uh, kicks the lights on and off and we mounted it inside or i should say aiden james customs did a fabulous job of mounting everything just you can't tell it's not stock when you're sitting inside right there's no wires anywhere no doesn't wires. look like things doesn't look like things were cut where, where's aiden james i want to say it's uh orange county i want to say um we'll put aiden aiden james yeah aiden james customs right there uh but they're fast it's mom and pop shop they're they've got a cool story they've got great rigs they really care about a lot of the they, they really care about the work that they do i told them that i wanted it as stock looking as possible because you know a lot of people will mount the s pod here or they'll mount it somewhere on the dash or up here which adds and, clutter it and, adds clutter yeah. I, I like it clean because at the end of the day even though I'm building this for, for functionality and being able to do some, some crazy stuff. If I had to pick up a client in this car, I would want them to get in and not feel like they're in my recreational type of vehicle. Yeah, so it's professional also. Exactly, once you're on the inside, for sure. The outside it's, looks looks a little adventure heavy, but once you're inside, there's all the, all the, all the elements of a, of a luxury vehicle. Right, and um, how's the wind noise? No wind or noise. Wind noise, uh, tire, road noise? Very little road noise, okay. if any. Uh, wind noise a little bit, maybe with a crosswind on the front uh, KC highlight lights, but for the most part with as much that's going on here, it's not it's not bad and you know it's well it's very well sealed and still fits through a car wash. Sweet. Let's check out the back seat. And wait a second, did you just say it fits through the car wash? Still? It still fits through the car wash. Really? Yeah, barely. This tall thing fits in the car wash. Fits through, fits through the car wash. That's awesome. Yeah, and they, uh, they always kind of roll their eyes a little bit when I pull in. But That's an achievement. <laughs> yeah, the guys, the guys on the uh, on the drying side of it, they're always happy to work on it because they climb all over it and they get in everything and dry it. But it still still fits and works great. All right, it looks like we got reclining seats. The seats do recline. And then when you put them forward, they do tumble forward. You know, I'm tall. Do you have to so take the headrest off, or does it? Is that designed to be able to close when? It's designed to be able to close when someone six foot seven isn't driving. Yeah. So, uh, and and there is a third row as well. The third row now is currently down because just coming back from. It just folds right in though. Folds right in. Uh, one touch power buttons folds automatically. So they've they've really designed this this rig well. You know, you've got even down here USB ports everywhere, USB A, USB C, as well as a uh, 120 volt household plug in there. So there's a lot of really cool touches that they've, your, that they've put in. Rear climate control and rear climate control and. Uh, 
you know, the some of the higher trims have the the captain's chairs uh, for the center row, but. I think it's if you're like me with kids, then you need every seat you can get. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't bother me because it's if I throw something in here, it's not going to fall between the seats. It's just kind of there. You ever open the sunroof just to look at the bottom of your tent? I have, and uh, there's a little bit of road noise, a little bit of wind noise, I should say, when you open the sunroof. Yeah. But uh, I bet that I bet that uh, sunroof helped with installing the tent. It did. We were able to go in right from underneath and kind of get back on one of the crossbars and get that uh, bracket down. Rubber mats? Stock. Stock rubber mats. Yep. OEM stock rubber mats. Get them uh, dirty, take them out and pressure wash them. Yep. And they have been pressure washed. Proud. That means you use it. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did notice, Tom, this thing sounds good when you start it. Tell me about that. It does. So MagnaFlow developed the Overland series exhaust for this Sequoia. And it sounds incredible. The, the tone is perfect. I mean, it's it's still a hybrid, so it's a little weird going through parking lots, especially being a built rig like this. And people look at you because they hear that kind of hybrid sound. So I always give it just a little bit of gas so that the engine kicks on and it kind of rumbles to life. And uh, we're able to we're able to keep on rolling. But it's uh, MagnaFlow Overland series exhaust, which kind of tucks the the exhaust pipe up a little bit so if you're if you have some uh some some weird angles you're trying to na navigate you don't have to worry about your exhaust being smashed or ripped off it's so functional it's, more than just exactly. noisy and, and it didn't seem too noisy it was like a tasteful it's tasteful for sure it, it's not overdone not overdone at all you know it's there when you want it uh, i've kind of learned how to drive so if i'm keeping rpms low and just kind of chilling it's able to sound very mellow but if, if i want it loud i can really step on it and you hear the turbo spool up and you hear that just it sounds like a performance engine yeah it's it's, it's a great company i've had magnaflows on all of my my past three vehicles have all had magnaflow and they're a fantastic company to work with uh does that rear window open it does hinge open access. it there is still access it does hinge open and not as cool as the roll down. Not as cool as the roll down, but you know, this works for me too. I, I like it too. They give you this little convenient knob right here and a button. So you just press the button and you got that knob. You can just lift up and, and push down. What's all that? Open that again. Interesting. They got the motor for the wiper. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It's never noticed that before actually. I'm I'm such a nerd. I can't I can't not notice these Play things. With things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are those are those steps factory? The steps are factory TRD. So you don't want to mash them too hard. You don't want to mash them too hard, and also you don't want to hit your leg on it when you're getting out. So <laughs> it's very gritty, almost like a like a very coarse sandpaper. Okay. So have you scraped anything on them yet? Uh, on the trail? Yeah. No. 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 You probably don't want to. Those will. Um, what kind of MPGs are you getting? about 13 right now, I'd say. 13 which average? Is 13 average, which is uh, down from where it was when I first picked it up, which is around 20. Um, but, you know, we've got a lot of extra weight on here with the tent, which weighs 200 pounds, and the rack, which is probably about another 100 pounds. And the big awning, tires big lift, tires, pushing the, more air, all that, yeah. All that, yeah, so it's, but, but there still is no lack in performance. So on the way out to Overland Expo a couple weekends ago, my buddy and his new Tundra uh, twin turbo V6. This is a hybrid twin turbo V6. Pulled up next to me and he said, hey, I wanna see how this, I wanna see how these match up to one another. So just standard drive mode, not sport, not anything like that. Rolling at 40, blew his doors off. Rolling at 60, blew his doors off. And his is just a, his is just the Tundra. He's got a lift and 37s on it, which makes a difference. But I've got a lot of extra weight that he doesn't have. And it was noticeable. Did you mention the rack on the tent? It uh, looks like a couple crossbars up there. A couple how, crossbars. Any I, idea how much weight uh, that can hold? I don't. That's okay. Probably not much being on it because it's pushed up by struts and. Right. Yeah, not much. But useful if if you need to put a, a like bike a surfboard or, or a bike yeah. or something up there. Yeah, the, the, it it could definitely hold something. Solar but, panels. Yeah, solar panels. The basic stuff. Sweet man. Dude, Tom, thank you so much for taking your time to show me this rig. It is beautiful.
but I love it. Thank love you, thank it. you. So it's been a lot of fun uh, building this out. We've got a lot of stuff that's still in the works, and you know, with as rare as these are, this will be one of the first ones that has some of the coolest new uh, off-roading and overlanding stuff on it. So stay tuned because it's just it's going to keep getting better. Definitely, will stay tuned, and don't be surprised if I hit you up for another tour or, or update. Video. Anytime, <laughs> anytime, man. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, or better yet, on Instagram at the Mad Yeti. Uh, he'll probably answer your questions a lot better than I can. Also, consider subscribing so you can see more content like this coming up. Again, thank you. See you on the next one.